who is all merciful and who has given us a few to come to his house and sit in this gallery and right now we are sitting inside the masjid by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our hearts Alhamdulillah We are happy or not? We are sitting inside the masjid. Can you give me an answer? Are you happy? Yes. yes. Alhamdulillah. We are sitting inside the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the garden of paradise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ila maradjum rubiyadil jannah farta'u When you visit the the paradise, then you get the fruit from the that. The Sahaba advised the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say, "Oma ayatul jannah ya Rasulullah." What is the the garden of paradise? Means where is the garden of paradise in the face of this earth? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied, "The masajiduha, all the masjids of the earth is the garden of paradise." So right now I am very happy to see a lot of youngsters are here sitting inside the masjid while a lot of other kids, other youngsters are walking outside the street. Subhanallah. You guys are lucky. That is why you should thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for yourself, for your parents, for this management of this masjid. Sami. So my dear respected brothers and elders and especially our youngsters. Very briefly and shortly, I want to advise and I want to address two advice to myself and to my youngsters. Number one is, Alhamdulillah, like the Tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray five times, we do salah five times, we fast in the month of Ramadan, and we are reciting Holy Quran, mashallah, and we are coming to Madrasa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. At the same time, we have to be careful our manners. Good manners. Our akhlaq. Husnul akhlaq. Our husnul khuluq. We have to be careful about our good manners. Because good manners is such an important thing in our life. Because we don't, we don't good manners. We don't your akhlaq. Do not be successful in this world and thereafter. Being a good teacher, being a good hafiz, being a good maulana, being a good parisa, you have to have good akhlaq. Not only us, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَوْ كُمْتَ فَضْلًا غَرِيزَ الْقَرْبِ لَنْ فَضْلُوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ even though the knowledge of Quran, knowledge of Wahi is so great knowledge, so blessed knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who are who were willing to accept it, they were so pious and you know so great. The Sahaba are going the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are rude and hurt hardship, Harshish then, then they would scare from around you. They would not sit with you. So if you become a hafiz or alim or, or a teacher, but you don't have manners, then no one will come to you. No one will sit around you to listen from you and from uh, learn from you. That is why we sh should be careful about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, well, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that I have not sent you except as a blessing, as a rahmah for to the universe. So he was the rahmatun lil alameen. We know, we all know how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is rahmah for year after. Through his teachings, through his teachings, Quran and Hadith, we will be able to enter paradise. We all know that. 
same thing without his teachings in this life, in your personal life or family life or society life, you will not be successful. There will be more peace and tranquility without any manners. If you were, were to make an example from a village, in this village all the bad actions are taking place. All the bad, bad habits, bad manners are taking place. There is a hatred, there is a cursing, cursing, and hitting each other, they are biting each other. Can you describe this village as a village of mercy? Definitely not. In order to have mercy and tranquility and peace in a society, you have to have good akhlaq. That is why the mother of Imam Malik rahimahullah when he was a child, Imam Malik rahimahullah, he was a child. He was about to learn knowledge of him. His mother advised, advised him. His mother advised him. Izhab ila Rabi'ah, She said, go to Rabi'ah, the scholar of Madinatul Munawwara, and learn from him manners before you learn other from before. Before you uh, learn Adab from him, before you learn knowledge from him, SubhanAllah. And later on, look at the effects of this uh, advice. The one of the student of Imam Malik Rahimahullah, when Imam Malik Rahimahullah became a teacher, now he is Imam. So one of his brilliant, brilliant students, he learned from Imam Malik Rahimahullah knowledge. Within first year, he learned all the, he gained all the knowledge of Imam Malik Rahimahullah. Within one year, first year. And yet he remained another 19 years with Imam Malik Rahimahullah. So he was asked that since you have done all the knowledge of Imam Malik Rahimahullah within the first year, why did you spend another 19 years with Imam Malik Rahimahullah? Then he replied, he said, I have learned one, within one year, his own knowledge of Imam Malik Rahimahullah. Then I spent another 19 years with him only for learning the other from Imam Malik Rahimahullah. Akhlaq, the manners from Imam Malik Rahimahullah. Then he said something so profound, he said, I wish that I I was used to spend this all 20 years only for learning the manners for Imam Malik Rahimahullah because he was the ocean in manner. The way he dealt with people, the way he dealt with the governor, or rulers, or the way he dealt with his students. Every aspect of his dealing is a teaching in the manner. You see the effect of the advice of the mother of Imam Malik Rahimahullah. So we don't, you know, we don't manners, we don't other, we don't Allah, we don't good manners. You have, if you have everything, you have money, you have wealth, you have knowledge, you have power, but you do not have your Allah, that means you have nothing. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Akbalul Mu'minina Imanan Ahsanuhum Khuluqa the best of amongst the believers in faith is the one who has good manners. Subhanallah. Prophet in another hadith said, the cheap with people, a cheap with people with your good manners. Without good manners, will not be successful in this life as well as hereafter. If you have, mashallah, all ahmad, all the salah and fasting and recitation of Quran, everything you have. But if you do not have manners, if you're, you're dealing with other people, or your behavior with other people is not, not good, not okay, then this, this knowledge or this, you know, the name and fame or whatever you have in this world, it will not, it will not be worked for you in hereafter. It is said in the hadith, once Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the, uh, the, the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
Money Muflis, do you know who is the bankrupt amongst you? Do you know who is the one who is bankrupt amongst you? The Sahaba of mine, they replied, the bankrupt or poor amongst us, the one who have no money, no currency, no possession. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained, the real Muflis, the Muflis of bankrupt is the one who come from on the, uh, in hereafter with mountain, mountain of reward, mountain of salah and fasting and hajj and zakat. But at the same time, he come from in hereafter with bad manners. So in the hereafter, what will be happen to him? The all the people who are offended by him in this life, they will come forth in hereafter. And they will take from him his good deeds. Because there is no exchange, there is no currency in hereafter besides your net amal, your good deeds. So all those people who are affected by you in this life, they will come forth in hereafter and they will take the reward from you. One by one people will come. Maybe he is hurt by you. Maybe that person he hit somebody, he killed somebody, he, he took money from somebody, or he backbite somebody. All, all these people will come. And they will start taking reward from him one by one. Once his own reward will be done, the feet will be finished. Then from, from, from there, back this will be given to him and he will thrown back to hellfire. Let us explain him what this hadith. When, when will be this happen? When will this, this settling between the people? It will be right in front of the gate of the paradise. Right in front of the paradise. This because in paradise is such a nice place. Subhanallah. Paradise is such a great place. You cannot even imagine in this life what is there. And what kind of peace and tranquility will be there. There will be salam and salama. Always salam, peace and peace. No fighting, no cursing, no cursing, anything there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not admit any person there is any issues between any, uh, other Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will settle between Muslims in right in front of the paradise. That means that person, he passed through many, many gates to reach to the gate of the front of the gate of paradise. Because the, the dying time, the sakara, is a big problem. You see, it's very difficult time. And the time of cover, very difficult time. 30 years, 40 years, you have to stay in the very bed. And then the, the hashtag, the day of judgment is 15,000 years. And then sirat, 30,000 30, years. All these gates he passed through because he has, mashallah, he has salah and everything. Salah, zakah, song, everything. And now he is in the front of the gate of the paradise. Now all these bad manners will catch up him in there. And from that place, all the people who were offended by him, they will come forth to him. And they will take all rewards from him. And he will be thrown back into the hellfire. So Prophet Wasallam said, he is the one who is really, really Muflis, the bankrupt amongst you. So you see, if we read MashaAllah, Quran, Alhamdulillah, if we do everything, but at the same time, we have to have akhlaq with us, the good akhlaq with us. Then inshallah, we will be successful in this, uh, in this life and hereafter. And another short uh, advice, my dear youngsters, be nice, especially be nice with your parents. This is not my speech. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and be nice with your parents. It is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
فلا تقل لهما اف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما الله سبحانه وتعالى say your, your Lord has decreed that you do not worship other than him other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and right after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ اِحْسَانَ and be nice with your parents treat your parents with ihsan what is ihsan is there is no directly meaning of ihsan in English we do not explain you but ihsan is word from husun husun means perfection perfection means you have to serve your parents as much as you could without expecting anything you got from them this is one way street you have to give you have to give and give and give but nothing we can you have to always you have to serve your parents وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ اِحْسَانَةً إِمَّا يَغْلُبَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ حَدُهُمَا وَكِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا اُفْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say one of them or both of them in their old age if they reach to you that means in front of you if they became old age one of them or both of them do not say even oof words to them do you understand oof words? This is not, not even a word. This is not even a word. This, this is a fraction. Just say oof like when you got any hearts, you say ouch. Like this oof sound. It is at least one to express irritation. So you said, do not say even oof words to them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not rebuke them. And speak with them politely, nicely. And politely, gently. Don't be harsh with your parents. Don't be rude with your parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to feel to be obedient to our parents and be obedient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to feel to follow the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ta'ala.